I hope you're all uh, enjoying the day. So this uh, particular session is all about uh, just giving you a bit of an insight into the music industry. Um, and of course, next to me I've got the amazing Nixon. Hello. And Trent. Trent, so uh, <laughs> who uh, loves talking <laughs> and um, is super excited about being here today. So um, Trent manages Nixon and um, also runs his own label. So hence... Um, why he's here and um, obviously again we're talking about the industry but um, you would have heard a little bit from Nixon um, around composition and um, essentially how she makes music and all those really cool things and to be honest it was awesome. Oh, so thank you. It was really really cool. So I thought maybe we could just open up um, by just you give us a bit of a, a sort of snapshot as to how you first started interacting with the music industry and what did that kind of look like? Yeah, so first of all, my although I was writing music, my first kind of step into the music industry was as a DJ. Um, so when I was 18, I started DJing in local clubs um, around Sydney. So that was kind of my entry level. Um, and so I was writing music at the same time, and back then it was kind of like more club-friendly music. Um, so that was kind of from when I was 18 to... Probably 21, yeah, so it was like a couple of years of writing really awful tunes and DJing around um, <laughs> Sydney, um, eventually like sometimes playing those awful tunes and being like, yeah, they're sick, they're not good. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, so it was kind of just like DJing around the local scene and then um, I didn't realise but Trent had been watching me because <laughs> he also um, was DJing around the local scene as well. DJing is like a very, it, uh, at least it was in Sydney, like a really big community kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Even though Trent's from Wollongong, he would come up. Yeah. Um, he ran, like you did loose change DJs. Yeah. Trells was a very popular one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so we kind of like, I guess, met for the first time through DJing. Uh, and then I started writing music that was, I kind of was like, I don't want to write music to play in clubs anymore. I want to write music that's, that, that I want to write. Mm -hmm. And so All You kind of was formed. Um, I put that on Unearthed. Mm -hmm. And then Trent pretty much hit me up to manage me. There Straight is. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I, I hadn't really, I had been looking for management mm -hmm. um, like a year or so beforehand. Okay. Um, I had friends that were sending, that were on labels, they were sending my songs to labels they're like she's not ready which I wasn't um, and I wasn't ready for management um, but eventually it kind of happened so I was really lucky um, oops don't want to touch the mic <laughs> I was really lucky um, but I guess all of that was from kind of being involved in my local um, kind of music scene um, and just I you know I, I was a resident I played there all the time so I knew quite a few people um, you know, I became friends with quite a few people that I still, you know, cross paths with quite often on the music scene because those are kind of the avenues you have to go through. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because essentially that is a really good pathway into the industry is obviously being in a club and, and mm. playing tracks and, um, and, you know, there's so many good examples too of people um, combining um, instruments making with that to, to build a different kind of experience too so yeah that's that's awesome and so obviously Trent you're sitting back and going wow she's <laughs> awesome <laughs> I'm gonna sign this person yeah is that the yeah then, pretty much yeah I I, 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 I mean I, I hadn't really heard much from Trent other than like we'd he'd booked me but when he wanted to manage me, like Trent came in like a missile. He was like, I need to manage you. I had someone yeah. else wanting to manage me at the same time. And Trent was just, you know, um, he was hitting me up every day. And he was like, I'm so keen to be on board with this project. And I think um, if someone is like calling you all the time and they're invested and they genuinely, like you can see they actually care, um, that's probably the person you want to go with. Um, this other person like wouldn't even reply to my email, but they'd kind of been like, "Oh yeah, keen," yeah, yeah. you know. Um, it, it's really interesting. I remember um, picking up a similar conversation with um, KLP, and she was saying how at one point she was with 
you know, a large, working with a large company, but the person who was working within that company had moved and she was like, well, actually it's about that relationship and that person genuinely wanting to like help and do something that's so, yeah. so important. So that is a really, like a key part too, isn't it? Because if there are people out there that, you know, are super interested and, and, and really keen to invest in your product, mm. that's, that's super valuable. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I like that. It's great. So um, <clears throat> that's you know you're playing tonight. You've you know you've you've done all this amazing stuff and that you've released lots of material and so I've, I'm just wondering like from an artist's perspective, like it is hard in some ways to make a living out of music. Yeah. Um, there's sort of no silver bullet, for example. But um, in terms of like yourself making a living, is it Predominantly from live performance, what's how does it loosely kind of work for you? Yeah, so I will just say quickly, like before I, I now write music, I do music full time. Before that, I drove trucks for four years. So, right, what sort of <laughs> yeah, what, like the kind of um, like Coles sized kind of ones, not like the road kind of trains, um, but you know, small car license. Definitely a truck if you look at it. I was delivering live seafood around the city. Yeah, I'm going to add something to that. This is totally random. I didn't know we were going to go here. Down here, yeah. It's cool, but um, my yeah. dad actually has a land speed record in a truck. Oh, no way. <laughs> Maybe I'll beat him. <laughs> no. You got the little but, truck. Um, and... No, yeah. But I think, like, the thing is with music is you're going to have to, if you really want to spend your time doing it, you have to, it's quite hard because, you know, when your friends are out and they can go get a nine-to-five job and they can make you know, quite a bit of money and they can go and do these things, you're going to have to find a way to be able to make money yeah. to survive, but also have time to invest in what you're passionate about mm -hmm. and your music. So I have a friend who is really fantastic at music, making music, loves doing it, but it's never really taken it anywhere because he's worked nine to five, you know, and I think you can do it. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard, but I found a way where I could start work at 6.30 in the morning finish at midday, have a shower, write music, stay up until like three in the morning and then like, not three in the morning, but really late and then start again. And it was kind of this like, oh, I got to do this awful job. Well, not an awful job, but like something that I really didn't care about. It was really fun actually, driving trucks around. But, um, <laughs> and then I got to kind of reward myself with writing music. So that I think is important at the start, um, having something that's flexible to kind of you know keep you going um, and then once you kind of are in a position where you're making money as a musician um, you can make money through touring um, so it, which is hard if you're in a band um, or live musicians they don't make as much as DJs do touring because DJs only need to take themselves and a couple USBs whereas a band obviously you have to get all your gear and all your people around everywhere so you know that's one way of kind of making money, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but also royalties. If you release music in Australia um, and it's you know gets played on Triple J, you put it on Triple J on Earth, then you should go and sign up for APRA. Sorry. Yeah, so APRA um, Amco's is pretty much um, Australian Rights APRA Performance Rights Association. Australian Performance Rights Association. Yep, sorry, <laughs> I was like, what is it? Um, so pretty much you register the song you've written, you say how much you know, percent of that is yours. Yep. So if you've written it yourself and you're a producer and you've had no one else sing on it, your 100% is yours. Um, if you've released with like a label or anything, no, that doesn't change, it's 100% yours. Um, anyway, and then you get paid like every three months. Um, you know, wherever that song has been, you'll get a royalty for it. So if it's played on the radio, you'll get a royalty for it. If it's played on Spotify, you get a royalty for it. Might not be the biggest, but streaming these days is great for artists because although, you know, you're not getting this amount that you would get for like, um, I don't know, selling the whole single, at least when someone plays your song, you still get 0 0.0065 cents, <laughs> you know, but that all adds up. So that's pretty much, yeah. you don't make a, like if it kind of, but then, you know, where we've kind of moved from is everyone was buying music and then everyone was pirating music, which I don't do. And I feel like if you 
want to be in the music industry, yeah, it's a exciting. really good thing to, yeah. you know, sign up for streaming or just buy your music because, yeah. you know, yeah. I had a friend of mine down <laughs> illegally download one of my songs. I was like, what are you doing? I could have just given it to you on a USB, but she was like, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so um, wow. I guess those are some ways. Yeah. And like the whole kind of um, streaming sort of um, concept is obviously growing and subscription as well. Mm. Um, and it's really interesting because there seems to be some um, conversations suggesting that, um, you know, that basically this, this scenario is starting to help move the industry into a place where people do want to invest in it, into it again as a, from a kind of real business-based perspective. So it, from what I've read and what I've seen, it is starting to be, a, as you've said, a yeah. better outcome for the artists. And yeah. I wonder, um, in terms of like your music and when you're creating it and you've got a film clip, is that now kind of seen as a, as a way of, say, more kind of promotional kind of vibe in terms of then if that goes well, that will secure a series of gigs? Is that what's your thinking around? Obviously, you, you're making the music because you love it and you want to get it out there. But as far as it's, um, you know, currently stands, it's not a big income stream. So therefore, it's just a way to really um, get people excited to actually come to gigs. Is that a fair kind of... Um. What's well, I think for myself, I don't think, like, is that like you write music to get the gig kind of thing? Yeah, I just wonder, you know, that, that obviously, you know, live music, mm. you know, performing is, music is, is a thing financially as well. And, yeah. Um, and it seems to, you know, obviously back in the old days, obviously, you look at graphs of like 2000, early 2000, and oh my gosh, if you had a hit, in that period, you were making some so much money. Out yeah, of that recording. I think I don't. I mean, I definitely don't think of. Um, I think the main thing as an artist should always be writing music. I don't think that should be used as a tool to kind of get a gig. Okay. But I think you can definitely. Um, they definitely are things that you want to pair together, and it's not so much. Um, of like a tactical thing, I think it's just that they're right together. Mm. Like, you know, you write a song and people, you know, you want people to hear it and then you want people to like see it and experience it. And I think um, there are definitely um, kind of aspects yeah. where you can kind of be a bit tactical with yeah. um, the way you kind of put things out. But I definitely wouldn't say that write a music so you can do a tour kind sure, of thing. Sure, but yeah. I think like right. when, um, for my own kind of music will be like, okay, I've got like a mu song, I've worked on a body of work, I've got these songs. It's right, so how are we gonna put them into the world? Mm. And so it's kind of like this strategy around that. But Can then- I pick you up on that point, because that's really interesting too, because from your perspective, um, when you release music, what has been sort of the best way to actually to, to do that? Well, I've always kind of gone through, like, are you speaking in, like, terms of, like, doing it by yourself or, like, yeah, through a label I'm or... I'm thinking, like, for example, if, if like you're a, a student and you've, you know, you, let's say you're in a town, it could be Grafton, it could be somewhere like that, a regional sort of centre, and you've been working on this track and you're mm -hmm. like, maybe I don't, you know, have, have a manager and I don't have a label that's ready to go, but I've got this track I've been working on, you know, there's very obvious things you could do to, to release it, but I, I, I wonder just what for you kind of builds the best hype around a track, like in terms mm. of, you know, getting a, an audience, a digital audience particularly excited. Like, I think it's, I mean, yeah, quite difficult because when you are kind of starting out and it might be, you know, your first track, um, you're not going to have lots to kind of work with, I suppose. Sure, yeah. But... Um, you can, I think, using tools at your disposal, like Unearthed, I think is the most amazing tool. Um, it's a great thing that's been put in place by ABC and Triple J and stuff. Like you can put your music there and I think that's a really good place to start because if you put your music there, you have access to um, this kind of um, feedback mm. from people that you probably want to play your song you know you know if that's the kind of music you're making that works with triple j on earth i guess not all music works that way you might be doing like experimental industrial music and 
probably not the best place to put it as unearthed. <laughs> but um, I think if it depends on the genre. So if you were doing industrial, experimental music, um, I'd probably do my research. You probably listen to that music. So I'd find a label that works with that kind of music. Always kind of find a place that your music lives. Because if you send a hip hop track to a death metal ra um, label, chances are they're not going to release it. But if you find a place where you like the music they're releasing, then you can put your music there. But if you're doing it kind of, if you're not doing experimental industrial music um, and you're doing more kind of contemporary, modern, um, almost like pop music, rock music, whatever, that would fall under the Triple J, Triple J and F bracket, I think that's a really good tool for you to use. That's, let's, yeah, let's talk more about Triple J and Unearthed. And um, obviously, you've put your material out there in the past. And yeah. when you said that there was feedback and there was some conversations, what did they sort of look like? Just so, for, for example, yeah. if there's someone sitting out there thinking, oh, you know, what, what would I expect if, if I do put up some tracks out there that are, you know, potentially, you know, sort of good commercial based tracks? Yeah, well, you could, you know, receive a few, like you might not get any feedback because there's such a huge kind of, you know, catalog of it, but if you send it to some friends and you're like, hey, check out this track, review it, then that's probably a good idea. That's Use your good. friends as a tool. Right, if people okay. see that people are kind of, there's a little bit of, that's I don't know, true. heat on something, your friends are, your friends, like, they want to help you out, you want to help them out. And so, yeah, I'd be like, hey, look, I'd post on my personal Facebook page. If, I, if it was like the first one, I'd be like, hey, just released a song to Unearth, blah, blah, blah. If I have a... That's good to get. Yeah. And then encourage everyone to support you. Then. Yeah. yeah. And because okay. your friends and, I mean, people on Facebook that might not be like your direct friends, mm -hmm. these are people that, you know, probably have known you in your kind of musical journey since before then. They know that you've been dabbling. And so they're going to want to kind of see that mm -hmm. and how it progresses. Like, I know still to this day, like a lot of my friends that I probably don't see anymore, they still follow my journey and they send me really lovely messages yeah. um, when I release songs and stuff. They're like, whoa, yeah, that's you know, because they've seen from the start to finish. So I think use the people you know. It's, yeah, it's, don't use them, but like, you know what I mean? Well, they're, they're great. It's, it's fascinating. I've, uh, again, had figures, um, I guess, presented that suggest that um, half of the music industry is actually funded by people's families. So, right. Um, particularly in the case of traveling overseas and things like that. So it's like we can think you know, globally and we've got to work out strategies, but it's also to, I think what you know, yeah. you're saying is like- the, You've got to think small to think big. I think so, taking yeah. those steps and, and sort of building from there. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really like really interesting. Is there something maybe now that you could give um, us say that's been a real, maybe just a highlight in your career so far? What's, is there something, I know it's always a, it's a hard one and to really cheesy, knuckle down. Exactly, but it's like, is there something or, you know, that you're thinking like, this is really just... Simplified? Yeah, I think I, it was quite hard for me to kind of really lock down what this was because um, there have been so many amazing things that have happened. But I think like now I can definitely say that my first national live tour was yeah. like a big highlight for me. Um, we went all in on production, Trent did. <laughs> it, we got like too many lights to put in the like room pretty much yeah it's, it's not similar to this room and it being really hot was it it's it was like, extremely it's hot i was so sweaty um it's, and it's, thankfully trent wasn't on stage <laughs> yeah i know it lasted long at all. <laughs> i know he got too hot he was sweating too much yeah, totally. um yeah but um yeah i think that was definitely a highlight and just it was kind of you know you make music in your room mm -hmm. and you kind of you don't really notice these kind of, I suppose, milestones happening as they're happening. You just like, oh no, like, you know, I still think of myself as just this person from Ride that used to drive trucks and now doesn't have to. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of like, my, f I'm just me. I'm just, you know, not that great. Um, so <laughs> when you kind of, um, you know, see the kind of turnout and you get to perform and you get to be on stage and provide this experience that you've been in the crowd for so many times and you've been like, you know, it's just kind of this like, whoa moment. It's yes. really like pretty surreal. It's definitely like, 
I'll probably never forget that. Just, yeah, being able to kind of provide um, this space of entertainment for people that, and they like, like listen, they knew my songs. I was like, what? They know my songs? Yeah, so. You know the words? Yeah, exactly. So that was pretty crazy. It just kind of all kind of hit home in that kind of yeah, moment. That, that would be, yeah, quite an yeah, amazing experience. Mm. And it's, it's really interesting because the, the psychological aspects of being an artist are challenging, right? Yeah. <laughs> for example, like, you, you know, you, I think what you're explaining there is that it, it's not like something clicks and all of a sudden you think, for example, I've, you know, I'm this and everything's okay. It's like a continual sort of um, journey that, yeah. you know, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's kind of in, in some ways it's similar to the start where it's just this long play out. And I, yeah. I wondered, um, in terms of yourself and, and say your own mental sort of health, which, which you know, is a, um, some, you know, sometimes a real challenge for some musos. Yeah. What, um, for you to kind of, you know, be active and, and playing gigs and writing music, like, is there something that helps you just level out of it and get through all of those things? Yeah, I think it's being with friends is really important yeah. to me because as a musician, you, your weekends are not your weekends so much. Like, you get to have this amazing yeah. kind of yeah. time where you yeah. get to go away and perform and you're like, yes! This is amazing, but then you miss out on a lot of birthdays and a lot of kind of moments. And so I think just being around friends and kind of, they really like level you out and just kind of, it's just nice to be around them. I think you really take for granted how important friends are um, when you don't get to see them as much. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Was, um, actually, and listening, I think it was Triple J actually, I was listening the other day and, and there was a question geared around that sort of, you know, how does one um, position themselves in today's world to mentally get through, but mm. actually that was number one. Yeah, they, friends. Yeah, because you know, yeah. normally the response is like, right, oh, I'm going for a jog or yeah. I'm going to do yoga or I might do meditation or whatever it might be. But it's, um, we recently, um, two weeks ago, we had a um, workshop here about how to overcome performance anxiety. And it was, you know, it was really quite fascinating. Um, that particular person's approach was to really go into like, Deep kind of meditational thinking, and oh, right. um, and certainly, uh, I'm certainly saying this for a lot of the students too. They're obviously plugging and tuning into this. That um, you know, I'm sure for yourself too that when you're about to go on stage and all of that sort of stuff that goes on, because this is the like I find this really quite fascinating. This conversation because mm. we don't often prepare too much mentally for this, this yeah. sort of side of things. How do you feel? How do you approach like yeah? Because you want to go on, you want to be hyped, you want to you know, you want to actually deliver the yeah. best kind of result. Is there anything that has worked in that space for you or how do you? Most of the time when I go on stage, I am so scared. Like I'm so <laughs> nervous. I'm like a nervous wreck. Um, uh, what did help me was um, the Code of Conduct girls were like, do star jumps, do something like that. And so like getting your like heart going before you get on stage can help even though that seems like that's, I think that's true that's what actually one of the tactics that was suggested oh really yeah they yeah say, use use that adrenaline in a playful way yeah, yeah. just kind of like pump yourself mm. up so that um because like otherwise you're going on stage like sometimes you walk up to stage you're like this oh, but true. if you get yourself pumped um stay out of air con and cold air because the cold makes you more nervous we noticed that um, last weekend. Yeah, yeah, the cold makes you more nervous, apparently. So, and I think um, the heat must make men nervous, is it? Is yeah, <laughs> I think so. It's so <laughs> sweaty over there. But um, no, yeah, cold makes you, I think anyway, more nervous and you feel like, yeah, but just, um, I guess just like in your mind, just like know that you've done, or I think the best way to kind of combat nerves going on stage as well is know that you've done everything you can beforehand. Practice heaps. Like before I do a show, I'm usually just like practice, practice, practice. Because the worst thing, like my biggest fear is I get on stage and I just forget what to do. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, so I think it's just like practice really hard um, and then yeah, do like star jumps or something and I guess you're only going to be nervous for like the first few minutes anyway. Yeah. And then like, you'll be fine. 
and I didn't think I'd whoop, I didn't think I'd ever be able to perform on stage because I'm like genuinely such an anxious person. Um, but it's actually helped me having to go and just kind of face this crowd, um, but wanting to, but being so afraid of doing it. It's like yeah, it kind of helps you just combat those kind of anxieties. Yeah, so just like just smash through them. If you want to do something, don't let anything stop you, even if it's like a crowd of people or a crowd of no one. You know what I mean? I've had to perform to someone that was asleep once. <laughs> that was really awkward. <laughs> well, to pick up on that point and probably to wrap it up as well, like mm. I think, you know, that genuine love and that kind of belief and just doing it because you love it mm. um, is, is, is part of a conversation too that's not really discussed. And mm. so, yeah, I think if, you know, we were chatting about this before, if you're really intrinsically motivated to do something, absolutely do it. And yeah. as you said, like structure your life so that you can still support that without yeah. being, you know, um, and if it's like, you know, if it's literally getting up at six and driving a Coles truck, do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's cool. But, you know, but the way that you managed your time mm. and... I was broke for ages. Like I had no money to do anything, but I kind of cruised through, made it through. Yeah, so, no, that's, it's, yeah, it is. And it's, let's face it, it takes time and it's, you know, I mean, yeah. we live in a town, probably we're one of the more kind of lucky last examples of someone kind of winning the music lotto would be someone like Silverchair, you know, where oh, yeah. overnight it was like, whoa. Sick. You, you know, we were they, actually talking about them on the way here. Yeah. You know, yeah. And like, incredible yeah and like watching that play out was just it was absolutely phenomenal because literally with once tomorrow dropped it was just um you know it was massive how old were they when that happened as well were they 16 15 they, yeah they would have been around the 15 16 ish mark i'd say so that um and another example actually of a, um, a person i was playing a lot of gigs with uh, in terms of like you know this instant sort of stuff and, it, and i'm saying this out loud because it, it's not really so much like that. It is, you know, yeah. really quite challenging. It's, it's, it's definitely um, very rare to see that. I think mm. a good, I think someone like Amy Shark, like everyone said, you know, a door came out and it happened overnight for her. But that, which is true. It's an amazing song and it works really well. But mm. I mean, she was hacking away at this for years before that, you know, for years and years, like she, was you know kind of knocked back and it's not good enough you're not there yet kind of thing and that but for some i would imagine could be a period of 10 years so yeah like, you know trying to get through that to, to break through it but know. also i think the artist that comes out of that is a very like cool. you know resilient um you've just got years mm. of this like working on mm. stuff and knowing and she would know so much um through all of that time spent getting mm. to there. So I think it's really awesome seeing someone that, you know, has mm. hammered away, hammered away, hammered away, knock back, knock back, knock back, boom. And she's, you know, one of Australia's biggest pop um, exports now, right? Definitely. Exports. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, again, thank you so much. For anyone um, who's online, Jot in a comment, any questions, and we might be able to flick them through at a later point. And uh, just because we didn't get time for oh, today, sorry. And, uh, <laughs> but that's yeah. And write any you know uh, anything that if you've got a burning question, you know, it's potentially wrapped around something that you you know working on. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to, to um, get a response to that. Yeah. So, but honestly, like you know, you're here for with KLP and the Ricochet artists like that. That was awesome. Yeah, and, that was sick. And you know, like for us here, we're trying to where we can at least really connect with people like yourself so you, mm. that students can, you know, really understand what that whole thing looks like. So yeah. honestly, thank you so much for coming. It's you thank know, you. loving listening to you, love your music and you know, <laughs> awesome gigs. Or Like it's really cool what you're doing. So thank, thank you so very much. much. No, awesome. yeah, thank you. Cool. Thank you guys for tuning online. We'll catch you later on. Thank you. See you. <laughs>